In this video we're going to take a quick look at an absolute fundamental for armouring and that's riveting. It's taking either engineered rivets or your own made rivets and pinning two pieces of material together in a way that they can function either mutually on each other or be secured together or whatever's required. So we're going to take a look at the fundamentals of riveting, take a quick look at uh, sliding rivets and a couple of tools that can help you uh, get on your way a little bit more easily um, as you get learning this um, most fundamental of armoring skills. You can buy these hole making tools, these hole punches, uh, quite readily online. Uh, they get quite a bad press, quite maligned amongst a lot of groups, but if you stick to the parameters just using them on mild steel um, up to about 2mm as a maximum, they'll last you a while. This one now is about 8 years old and it's just coming to the end of its life. Uh, the way it goes, a few little replacements, nuts and bolts through here and so on. But it's just been a steady little workhorse on mild steel. If you're using high carbon, uh, something along those lines, really you need to stick uh, to a drill and the correct bits, uh, an HSS bit or a carbide drill bit, whatever it is that's required uh, to get through your material effectively. Throughout most of this video though I'm probably going to be using this tool because I'm just using some mild steel. But that's the first thing for riveting that you've got to do is to make the holes where you're going to stick the rivets through. So I've started out with one here uh, on this piece, you can see just there uh, ready to go, 532 hole about 4 mil. and what we're going to do is just put an associate hole in this piece. It's really straightforward, you mark the area you're going to go and use, put the tool on, give it a squeeze. and you're done. A benefit of this tool over the drill is there's no burring, your hole's nice and smooth and you're ready to go. So in this first instance then all I'm going to do is stick this piece of metal to that piece of metal. It's a really simple operation but it's absolutely key and fundamental to just about any piece of armour you're likely to make, certainly if it's medieval. You'll see riveting right back through into antiquity. This is really as simple as this, you take your two pieces there you drop the right size rivet through the pair of them and then you stick them together. Obviously you can't just rivet straight on there, you need to cut that down. So I've got a set of snips here, it's different types available, I prefer these ones, uh, these sideways snips. And what I do is offer it up hard against this piece of material here and then just lift it up a touch. Now I'm sure if you look online, and I'll try to and put some links below, uh, there'll be tons of advice on what ratio this should be. Just get a feel for it and you'll soon know. And then just snip that off and there we are. On now to the next part. As we go I'm going to try and introduce different pieces of equipment that will make this easier for you. But to begin with we have our anvil. Any hard piece of metal would do. Even the upside of a hammer held in a vise. Uh, would work for this. What you do is you offer your two bits of material together as before, put your rivet through, put it on the hard surface. Now here I have a flat hammer that I'm using, you can see. It's not a rounded peen at all, just a flat one, just to show it can be done. Just work your way around. Angling the hammer as you go. And there you go, riveted together. Now, we might be able to see on this, if I offer it up, you can see how it's flattened our rivet head. So that nice dome we had once before has been flattened. You can make a tool, buy a tool, uh, to sort that out. Um, you do see it occasionally on armour, but it's such a basic thing to get rid of, you don't see it very often. I mean, it can ruin the look of a piece. Now, if you've only got a flat anvil to work off of, you can file that back, or you can just work around it. And soften that line back. Now, you can see I've got no specialist tools here. There are snap tools, which is basically just a a small dome inside of a, 
a piece of metal that you put on and just taper it around. I'm just trying to prove the point, you don't require those specialist tools um, at all. You just keep working around. Soften up that line, and then when you polish this piece of material later, we offer it up again. When you polish that later, it'll still be squashed, but it'll look less so. The greatest example up there on the camera, see, it didn't focus very well. But what's happening is you just keep softening that down. And you're done. Very time consuming though, particularly as you've got to grind all that back now. But the point I'm proving is, without specialist equipment, you can rivet two pieces of metal together. So we'll move on to the next type of riveting we're going to look at. Now when I first started armouring, I found this piece of metal uh, in a um, second hand tool shop. I've no idea what it did before. And all I did here was drill some holes in, you can see barely a couple of mil with a standard drill bit of different sizes to make a riveting tool. So then, when I offered up a piece of material, it would sit in the hole and wouldn't damage the rivet heads. It's quite straightforward. I think some people call them a rivet snap tool, something like that. But whatever it is, it's very straightforward to make and you just do different size holes as you need. There's nothing that specialist to making one of these tools. This is a bit of 22mm uh, square stock that I had just lying around in the workshop. And what I've done is just drilled a series of holes in there. I've not even dressed them off. They'll dress off as you offer the rivets up and all this burring will disappear. And just by putting the same size hole in the top there, you can pretty much just offer up a bit of work quite easily and it will find a hole. This is the wrong size rivet for these holes but it will just find a hole and you tap away and over time that will work itself down to be smooth like the other piece. It's that straightforward. Just a bit of mild steel. Uh, best to use mild because it will deform slowly and um, ease off on the uh, edges here where they're quite sharp so your first few might be a bit of a problem. You can make that more rounded uh, more dome like on its profile if you like but you don't have to and then that'll just sit inside the hole on your anvil or in your vise or whatever you have. Now this is a snap tool I made about three years ago it's very straightforward I think it's a bit of 10 or 12 mil bar stock mild steel I welded to this piece so it fits in there nicely and I just stuck these lugs on the side you can see I'm certainly no welder um, but it holds nicely about two or three years old like I say and all I did was put a five uh, mil drill bit in the top and chamfer the edges around and now when I offer up pieces on there um, I don't deform my rivet heads at all. It's on this nice length here because it takes it away from the face of the anvil never mind, it takes it away from the face of the anvil which means if I'm offering up strange shapes I'm normally not touching it and it's nice and clear and for the odd time I am I just stick it in a vise and lift it well clear. Very straightforward tool to make. Even if you can't weld, just find a bit of bar and stick that in the vise. You can see that's what I used to do, which were all these marks around the edge here are from. Now, another sort of riveting you'll be doing an awful lot of uh, as a medieval armourer is a, a, a rivet that can travel a bit. Um, slide backwards and forwards almost like a hinge. So you'd see this principally on the sides of things like visors, bevers, uh, that sort of business. Uh, a little bit in arms and articulations but you've probably got a bit more of a sliding rivet in those which we'll look at next. Again it's pretty uh, straightforward what you're doing. Uh, you're just putting the holes in, offering up the rivet. Now what a lot of modern armourers do and they did back in the day is you make sure you have a washer in here. Now frequently today, depending on the authenticity you're going for, you'll tend to use an engineered washer um, but they're quite straightforward to make a washer, you just punch a hole in and cut it out um, and stick it on, just be sure to take these sharp edges off, you wouldn't want that anywhere near your temple um, if it's a visor for example. And again, as before, put down, lift up just a touch, a little bit more this time because so we're not going to peen it hard, I'm just going to Make sure we touch it down on the edges. Now you see here the rivet when it's cut has an apex on it. 
When you rivet that over with a pin, you can end up with two strong burrs there. And what I've seen folk do, what I do, is just touch that off with a file. Bear me one second, I'll try and do it. If it'll hold together. So freeze, we've got a little electric file here. Just touch those back. If you don't have an electric file, hand file will do, it'll just take you longer. You see we've got rid of that apex, now we flatten that down. Makes it easier to rivet. So we're going to take a look at how we do that next. So a quick word about washers. Generally, if you're going to buy your washers, this is the sort of thing you'll end up with. And they've got two sides to them. You can see the way the light's moving on this one now. The edges are rounded. That's principally the one you want to use on top. If you put it on the other way, you can see the edges are much sharper. Um, they're not really going to injure you or do anything like that. They just look a bit nicer that way around. And they are rounded, so there's less chance of injury. But I think the chance of injury in either is fairly minimal. Let me place that over. Now, what I've got underneath is that snap that I showed you before. What I'm going to use this time is a peen hammer, ball peen here, uh, rather than a cross peen, so you can see it extends in a ball there. This little specialist hammer has a, a ball peen at either end. You can get other ones, I'll pick up this one's probably my most used hammer. Uh, I just picked this one up from a car boot sale and equally you can use this peen. When you're working with the peen, don't strike straight down on the uh, the rivet, generally what happens is the washer will bounce off, but more than that, you're not really splaying these edges very much. Remember, we want to be able to move this piece afterwards, so we don't want to cinch it down so tight that it can't move, but we want to make sure it's tight enough that it can't fall under its own weight. So you start off with a couple of hits, now what happens there is the washers come off. A couple of ways around that, just a quick pass through your mouth. It's a bit gross, but that will probably stay there now. And just work around quick like that, so the rivet now can't come off, or the washer rather, can't bounce off. You can see we're still very loose here, and that isn't secured at all. So you just walk it around, a couple of hits in the middle, give yourself a bit more material because as that mushrooms up, and then walk it around again. Now remember, this might be on the inside of a helmet and you don't want to get cut across the forehead. I've seen that happen on somebody, your scalp bleeds really badly, it looked horrific. Um, you don't want any of that, so make sure you're putting those edges down. Just keep working your way around and every time you've gone around, just give it a couple of hits on the top, then carry on around again. You notice I'm using the edge of the hammer, not the full face. I'm just here so we get a bit more of a scallop on the side. Make your way around. Check out it's going. Yeah, that's good and stiff. And just work your way around the edge now. So it's been riveted together. You've got to imagine this goes off to a visor. This is the side of a helmet. Depending on your period and what you're recreating, that will have a catch sometimes, or it won't have a catch. It'll just be supported under its own weight. Sometimes they have to move very freely. Other times you need a stiff movement on them. Whichever it is, you just tighten it down to that. But you can see how this moves and would be workable for a visor. Like I say, sometimes you want them looser, sometimes you want them tighter, but that's workable for a visor there straight away. Sometimes you can put a bit of leather underneath this piece between there and there uh, to help with the movement. I've, I've put leather in there, I've put another washer in there, I've gone without either and to be honest, they always loosen off and at some point you find yourself trying to tighten these off on the inside of the helm. It's no problem. It takes a few moments and then you're back to a strong catch again. Easy. Now another type of rivet you're going to use a lot in articulations is a sliding rivet. Um, this will be a very large sliding rivet. There are such things. We've just done it this size to show more easily on the camera. And there's a couple of ways of getting these slots in. What I've done here is I've just punched a series of holes one after another. And at the minute, at the minute, our rivet, if it's put through it, 
won't move freely. It just gets caught. So the slot here has to be a little larger than the diameter of the rivet you're using. When you see these in the original armour, they're quite crude. They're often cut out with a chisel. Uh, it can even be square at either end. It doesn't really matter, to be fair. Um, I tend to prefer to use a chisel. And I'll take a look at how I do that in just a moment. But I just wanted to show this technique first. So you just drill, punch a series of holes, and then take the appropriate needle file, just a flat file like this, and work it across a few times. Easy as that's the bottom done. And then normally I'd turn it over, but just for ease now. There we go, just about done. So take the rivet you're going to use, give it a test. There we go. So that moves fine in there, and then we'd rivet the plate together. But what I'm going to do now is show how I'd use a chisel uh, with two holes uh, either end, and sometimes a smaller chisel, but I just don't have one with me at the moment. But uh, how we chisel out that mark there makes it a little easier sometimes to get the size you require. And we'll just take a look at how I do that. So what I'm going to do now. So I'm going to take this piece of material that I've put a couple of holes in here and I'm going to chisel out the gap in between. I find it a bit faster if I'm honest than punching lots of holes and sometimes the holes can be a bit problematic to make sure you get them in the right place uh, and you can miss and foul things quite easily. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work on my anvil and I'm going to knock this chisel down. What I don't want to do is chisel directly down to my anvil face. Uh, it'll destroy the anvil face over time and make a right mess of it. So what I've got is this piece of aluminium that I found in a scrap uh, dealer's one time. It's just a small block of aluminium. You can see I've used it quite a few times. Whenever I'm working anything hard down, I tend to work on this. Now blacksmiths, they've got a much better eye for this sort of thing and they work and they punch through the, the holes at the end. Uh, I just find this so much simpler for sheet material. So it's very straightforward. Get a nice sharp chisel. Again, I found this one in a car boot sale and just offer it up as close to the edges as you can get and give it a good strike. Try not to, I found anyway, double striking, end up bouncing the chisel across the work. So I've offered it up once, let's give it another go and then same again on the other side. There you go, in this case the piece has come out already for me. Sometimes you just got to push it out. Now it looks quite messy when you compare it with the other one. But a quick file and that will be operational. So we go, we've marked our hole out. Um, we've just got to get rid of this burr in there, that's no good at the moment. Our uh, rivet, I don't think it can even get through, not just about. But it's going nowhere. So we just need to take those down and we just use our flat file and away we go again. There you go, so that's the bottom done. And then again, just quick scrape across the top. One day I promise I'll find better working positions because you can't see very much, but it's only filing, there's no mystery to it. It's worked way long. You can see I've left the edges, the ends, quite rough. As long as there's nothing on the back here to catch yourself on, it doesn't really matter how rough they are as long as they're not lousing the rivet movement. If you look at original pieces, they are cut out often very, very roughly. This bit isn't seen, it's unimportant, it just has to function well. And that's not going to catch our rivet anywhere, a little bit of a bind up the top there. So 
we'll give that a go. And there you go. All set for the next piece. So we've got the slots, I'm going to use the slightly larger one at the top here, but they both work as we've seen. Uh, both take it well, although now actually the bottom one doesn't because we've pushed that material down into it. So I'll be using the top slot that we've created here. And it's just the same as before. So the other piece you're going to offer up, now you'll see these principally in articulations, in elbows and knees, pauldrons, uh, that sort of business, you'll find these. And all you do is put the rivet through both of them and just check that there's no binding. Now on the other side, you need a washer. Uh, you can do it without, uh, I wouldn't recommend it, it will break through sooner or later. I haven't seen yet an original with the original rivets in place that doesn't have quite substantial uh, washers. Very often these small engineering ones are dangerously close to the size of the hole. Um, so often make these yourself you know, very easily um, done. In fact, just make one quickly. Just to prove it. So I'll take the tool I showed you earlier. So we've made the hole. Clip the edges. Give it a tap so it's flat. When you're flattening something, if it's got a slight bow on it, and it rocks on the anvil like that, then turn it over so you've got the two edges there. You can't see this bit because I'm doing it real quick. Oh, we can just catch it there. And just give it a tap. Just to flatten it down. I wasn't anticipating doing this bit, but there we go. So there's our washer. Let's get rid of that engineering one. It's a very thick washer. Uh, it doesn't need to be made from 18 gauge. But there we go. So which way around do we have it? So there we go. Let's start again. So we've got our slot, old piece. Push them both through. Check. It's not binding. Put it on the snap tool and place our washer over the top. Give it a clip. Remember, where with the idea with these, on flush with the material, just lift up a little bit and then a plus a bit more because we're going to make a sliding rivet. Give it a touch with a file if you want to, you don't have to, just makes it easier as you're learning to get rid of that apex that the snips have put in. Um, don't need to. I'm just showing it can be done really. I don't tend to if you're just careful with the way you ping. But makes things a bit easier. Get your ball peen hammer, work it round a couple of times. That stops this lifting off. We've got to keep it loose, otherwise, we're just going to rivet it together like we did here which we're trying to avoid. We want this to move. Mushroom it round. Make sure there's no burrs. The rivet's not lifting out of the material. You don't want a rivet stuck out like a mushroom. And there is your sliding rivet. I'm going to do one quick extra piece. Again, just on sliding rivets, showing a tool that some people like to use when they're learning. I would honestly say don't bother just get it wrong a few times because all you've got to do which I'm going to do in just a moment is grind that off and you can start again for the sake of the price of a rivet learn to do it properly without this tool I'm going to show you um, and go from there but the reason I'm going to show the tool is some people like to use these tools um, and they, they have good mileage with it I personally don't like them so I'm going to show you they exist there you go sliding rivet so I'm going to grind that out now 
um, and then I'll show you this tool and then we'll stick the rivet back in. So I've removed the rivet just to show you this tool. Now just as before, we've got our slotted piece of material, our rivet and our other piece of material we're going to stick on it. Nothing's changed there at all. What I've created though, what I've made, you can see that there, is this slotting tool. It's just a piece of thin material, 18, 20 gauge, something like that. Uh, and I punched a hole in the end and then just ground out with the slitting disc, the lines, and that's been made there. And what you do with this, is go through like normal, put the washer on the back, and then you slot the tool between the two pieces of material. So that's gone in on the top between the child and parent piece. Put it down and make sure it's all compressed. Come off just a touch. Give a snip. Not going to bother getting rid of the apex this time. Uh, you, you'll soon figure out as you get working on it how to get rid of it. Just hammer it out the way really and then walk round. And then carry on walking around. Now this time, walk it out and go walk around. And I'm going to hammer it quite tight. More like the visor tightness that we did earlier. Check for burrs. All good. And there I've got the child material, the tool, and the parent material all stuck together. Work the tool out and then you're left with the required movement between the two. Like I say, personally I don't like them, I think they're a bit of a waste of time but it helps you get a feel for where you need to be. I used there, I think that's a bit of 20 gauge you could go down to 22, just a shim really, just to make sure that there's a fluid movement between the two. That's how you use that tool to achieve what you're after. So we'll take a look at the tools that we've used, what we've achieved, and uh, then a quick look at uh, how not quite sliding rivets, but doing something like this can in fact help with the movement of say something like a Sabaton. So an overview of the tools I've used and the tools I think realistically you need as a minimum. The hole punch here, whilst it's handy, um, pick them up for about £30 or so, um, online, maybe cheaper, you just don't need. Um, it just makes things a bit simpler because it doesn't leave any burrs on the holes and so on, but you don't need that. All you need realistically is a drill and a couple of drill bits. We've got the ball peen hammer. It's a specialist bit of kit here, uh, you don't need that one. Realistically, this is the one I used at the beginning just because it was to hand. Uh, you're less likely to find a small hammer like this. And more likely to use the uh, hammer which I've lost. Here he is. Something like that. Certainly in the UK, a standard ball peen hammer, that'll work absolutely fine. Uh, you need the snips for the rivets and you certainly need your rivets, you can make them yourselves but when you're getting going it's just not worth the effort unless you're trying to do a piece 100% authentically it's probably not worth your effort anyway and people won't pay for some of the time that it can take for that and the same for the washers you need some washers to be able to do you need the metal that you're actually making the piece with some cutters for that it's not really strictly for the riveting, so we'll just put those to the side for the moment. A file for the sliding rivets, yep, you can't really do without that. I can't think of a way you can do it unless you've got plasma cutters and that sort of business. Even then, I think you probably still need to file it out. You don't need the setting tool. Just learn to do it by eye. Get it wrong a few times and you'll soon learn how to do it properly. The snap tool so that the rivets uh, don't deform on the top. I think realistically if you're trying to make it look nice you need a tool like that to rivet into or a tool like that to set your rivet back 
nicely with afterwards. Now I used an anvil earlier to do the setting on. Get down a car boot sail and just pick up an old sledgehammer head and you're sorted. And if you're feeling up for the fight, just drill a few holes in the top, get that held in the vise, and there's your snap tool and anvil all in one. So I'd say that's probably the bare minimum tooling that need the gaffer tape that you need. I'm going to take a, one, a look at one more way that riveting can help uh, with the movement of something and then we're finished. Now at the minute, a short project I'm working on or a small project I'm working on isn't really medieval armour but the techniques are the same uh, as this pair of uh, high heels I'm turning into high heeled sabatons slowly. And you'll notice as I'm going here, rather than riveting and unriveting this, I'm using nuts and bolts. Um, you can pick them up from most hardware stores, uh, normally in um, metric, whereas the rivets tend to be in imperial. But a 4mm will work in a 532-inch, uh, and a 3mm will work in a 18th holes we've got on this case. It just means you can take them apart and put them back together again as many times as you need. I'm just going to take that off for the moment. Now, the actual piece itself, it's okay, it's just about done. There's very little articulation in this, which is why the decoration is on the toe, um, because the toes are already flexed inside the shoe, unlike with a Sabaton, where you'd have mostly decorative work on these pieces up here. Um, but it's a little stiff uh, in its movement. I want it to be a little more fluid, but what I don't want is sliding rivets all over the place. They're just not necessary. What you can do, I can get one of these apart, there we go. We'll take that apart. And this is the piece we're going to look at now. So at the moment our rivet is flush with this piece of material. Absolutely flush with the hole there. I would suggest if you want a freer movement, get a needle file. What I tend to do with the needle files as well is just snap the tiny little bit at the end off here. Uh, and then if you come out and stab yourself, you stand more of a chance of walking away from the injury rather than having to go to casualty because you've got a needle stuck through your hand, um, as I've done just here recently. But what you can do, pop that in there. And make the hole a little larger. If I wanted to make a sliding rivet, in this case with a file, so I just want about a half a mil or so extra space, don't tend to work down towards the articulations, you work away from the articulations, because otherwise you'll have this other piece of material sat just on the top, you'll then move that hole further down and it will walk off. So if you are going to put a bit of effort into this, make sure you're coming away from the articulations. So we'll try it for size, and then repeat the same on the other side. And stick it back together again. Already I can feel those screws going in are looser than they were before. Don't want them too loose, I just want them to move a little bit better, a little more freely. Given that this is going to be worn by a lady possibly in an evening dress, something like that, we really don't want them to be fighting their footwear. And that now is moving that much more nicely. I can do these right up now, as opposed to having to keep them loose. I repeat that on all of them and we'll get a much more fluid motion out of the shoes that articulates and a much more gentle motion. So another thing you can do with your riveting there. So it's not exactly the most exciting video on the world, it's not very riveting, but excuse the pun. 
um, but it's absolutely crucial to be able to rivet well if you're planning on being an armourer. It's nothing worse than having bits pop off, lames fall out, um, all that sort of business. It does happen, it happens to the best armourers in the world, but with a bit of care you can cut that right down to a minimum. Um, rivets will wear out, that sort of thing can happen. But uh, it's not that difficult to rivet well and to make sure that things stay together well. So uh, I hope you enjoyed that and uh, a new video soon. The next one will be moving on into the arm armour that we started uh, a week or so ago now, just over a week, where we took the arm harness and did that. We're going to take a look next how to bring the cooter out and uh, get the whole thing starting to actually look like a piece of armour uh, rather than some strange fish. Thanks for watching and see you soon.